So the last one we looked at today was canagliflozin for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Uh, this is a completely novel drug that causes glucosuria, causes glucose in the um, urine to be excreted. So that patients excrete calories basically in their urine, and this is the mechanism of action. It's unlike any uh, prior therapy for type 2 diabetes. You know, the biggest difference here is its effect on weight, you know, because calories literally come out in the urine. So some of the calories that patients ingest don't even end up uh, contributing to their weight, but come out in the urine. It causes the most weight loss of any of the drugs available for type 2 diabetes. And this is the big difference, really, compared with existing treatments. Um, it is safe in the short-term um, studies that allowed it to be approved by the FDA. Um, it does not cause hypoglycemia in monotherapy. Um, it causes about the same degree of A1C reduction as other treatments for type 2 diabetes, but um, causes significantly more weight loss. In fact, some of the other drugs actually cause weight gain when they're taken for diabetes. Uh, there's two safety issues. The side effect is kind of an unusual one uh, because glucose um, appears in the urine. Uh, there's an increased risk of fungal infections, fungal balanitis for men and vaginal candidiasis for women. And it probably simply relates to the milieu of the extra sugar in the urine being sort of a, um, a petri dish for uh, candid infections to develop. Those are generally you know, not serious and treatable. The one long-term issue which hasn't been uh, completely addressed yet is whether it might be related to increased risk for certain types of cancers. So the FDA has required post-marketing surveillance for this drug to see if, in fact, that is the case. Uh, they did not think that was likely enough that it was a barrier to, to approving the drug. So this may potentially replace some current medications. Um, I would not recommend starting it as monotherapy first line. For n several years now, the um, ADA, American Diabetes Association, has recommended starting metformin as first-line therapy for type 2 diabetes in all patients unless there's a contraindication. So that would be the first-line therapy. This may potentially have a role as second-line or add-on therapy. Uh, for example, currently most of us would use a sulfonylurea, such as glipizide or gliburide for that purpose. Uh, if weight loss was one of the most important um, goals for treatment of the patient with type 2 diabetes, this could potentially have a role as second-line therapy. I would say an actual practice where it would be used is that in patients who have not done well with other treatments for type 2 diabetes, um, sort of a third line option. Or sometimes when you require polypharmacy, it might be metformin plus a sulfonylurea uh, in a patient who does not want to switch to insulin. This could sometimes be a third or online added uh, treatment to, the, to existing therapies because of its effect on A1C reduction and the effect on weight loss. And potentially, um, the FDA has only approved it for the use in type 2 diabetes, but since it causes glucosuria in patients with normal blood sugars, which is how it works, it conceivably could cause weight loss um, and stabilize blood sugars in patients with um, glucose intolerance or prediabetes. It hasn't been studied in that circumstance, and that would be considered to be off-label to use it for that purpose, however.